Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back there, daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So I recently just did a video yesterday talking to you guys about Credit Suisse as well as uh, Deutsche Bank. And we we're really kind of talking about this event that is unfolding before our eyes. And everyone is, you know, essentially saying, okay, this is the, the moment. This is it. Everything's going to collapse. It's game over. And do you guys remember what I said yesterday about this entire event? I said, this is the big fear play. And I even quoted this tweet. Now, this is obviously Graham Stephen. Uh, if you guys don't know who he is, he does a ton of videos on real estate, on cars, crypto, everything. Um, but I'm, I, I quoted it because he's talking about the $600 billion bailout that the Lehman Brothers had um, back in 2008, essentially. And we do see here, you know, when they crashed and took the economy with them, it was $600 billion. We are talking about $2.8 trillion at this current moment, which is 4.6 times more. Credit Suisse is at a critical moment now, says the CEO, what lies in store of, you know, for the world. And I quoted this because, I mean, this does go in depth. If you guys do want to go check out this tweet, I highly advise you all to go check it out. I think that's very interesting in regards to a lot of the information that is happening. Uh, I mean, ultimately, like, listen, the, the collapse is not going to be extremely easy to predict like this. It's not going to happen at times where like we are anticipating it. It's going to happen at times where we least expect it. It's always happened like that. Um, but we definitely are seeing a lot of rumors around it. We're seeing a, a massive fear mongering sentiment around the entire market. And I even quoted this tweet and I did say, I really do believe that this is the end all be all moment. What does that mean? This is the most bearish event we have seen in a while. And the sentiment is that the markets are on the brink of collapse. The Fed meeting tomorrow while the DXY looks topped out. And then down here, I said the bottom will not feel like the bottom and the sentiment and events will all be at critical levels. The world will feel like it's ending and there is no hope. That's when the trajectory begins. We have seen this in 2020, for example, everyone call much lower, etc. This is why we are hedged either way. We have positions taken, but also stables on the sidelines. I am prepared for whatever happens next, but the world of finance is beyond fearful at the moment. And remember what I told you guys. When we are at the bottom, things will look like it's going to get a lot worse. It's the 2008, you know, moment. That's it. We are going to crash and everything's going to collapse. We're making all new time lows and, you know, Bitcoin's going here, there, whatever. Uh, recently, I just seen on my timeline, somebody calling Bitcoin down to like $3,000 again during March of 2020, essentially. It's just absolutely insane how bearish this market is. And listen, do we know exactly what's going to happen next? No, no one does. But I will say this. I have been looking at the dollar. Worst case scenario on the dollar, maybe we do pump a little bit more. Maybe we go up 8% to 120, aka dollar 20. This would be the pivotal moment that we really kind of are watching for on the dollar. We are waiting for that 180, you know, turnaround event because the dollar is the one that really kind of makes things, you know, go boom, if you will. And, uh... You know, if we do see the dollar do a 180 and we start to drop rapidly, maybe down to, we'll say 101, even 104, right? Even around this like 105 area, that's still a major opportunity because even at the current level that we are at, we'll just say 105, this is about a 5% drop. Down here would be about a 9.11% drop. But what I'm really kind of looking at is testing that nice floor that we have seen multiple times being tested. This would be about a 19.70% drop in the US dollar's value. Just to put this in perspective with you guys. So uh, let's go back to March of 2020. So here we have March of 2020. During this time where, when the entire market went absolutely parabolic, this was to the bottom candle wick. We're not going to use candle bodies here. This was about a 13.37% drop in the dollar that uh, allowed us to have that massive bear or uh, bull run off of that bear market sort of, all right, yeah, everything's collapsing sort of idea, which happened during March of 2020 as well. Uh, so when we look at this, we don't have to come down 20%, but if we do, then that's going to be a huge opportunity in this market. Now, say for so, we don't go down 19.70%. That's totally fine. Even if we come down about 9%, that's plenty enough to push us a lot higher in regards to this market. But say for so, we top out at 120. That would be, you know, the best scenario because this is still about a 15.80% you know, drop on the US dollar. 
And uh, to the 105 area, 106, this would be about a 12.38% drop. So either way, what we are looking at here is, is the US dollar going to have this massive 8% run up to a $1.20 and break it and go even higher, which would break things surely? Um, or is this about to top out? Is it about to exhaust itself, which it has been exhausted in my opinion as well? And uh, are we about to see a massive 180 turnaround? Because remember, the dollar is one that we have been watching for closely on this channel for a while. Just to give you guys a quick insight, um, off of the 2018 low to the high in March, this was about a 16.76% run up on the US dollar. So far, we already ran up about almost 30%. So th this going to about 36% almost on the US dollar would be absolutely insane. And this is why I say like we are essentially exhausted on the US dollar. I mean, even if you go back to the 2008 financial crisis uh, off at of the bottom to the topping point of, you know, uh, we'll go to, where should we go? Um, we'll go off of the 2017 uh, high. So this was about a 50% run up almost. So just think about how exhausted we are right now on the US dollar. This is why I'm watching that meeting tomorrow. And especially even if you go look at the total, which is the total market cap of crypto, uh, here you guys have the total for crypto. This, this is a very interesting one that I've been eyeing closely. As you guys do see, we are going off of the macro low from March of 2020. And we're going off of the high that we recently hit in November. Even if you wanted to go off the macro low of 2018 as well, we could do that. Uh, it's very similar in regards to where we are at, but uh, I do think that I like the macro low from March 2020 a little bit better. And as you guys do look here, the pivotal moment for us to hold, or I shouldn't say moment, the uh, pivotal level for us to hold uh, currently is the 618. Uh, this is about $844 billion in market cap. This is the big area that I've, I, I've been eyeing. And this is on the monthly. If we go to the weekly, you guys could see how we tested it perfectly. This is where a lot of the support range is on the total. So if we do lose this level, I think that that's the area where we really kind of want to de-risk quite a bit. And can we wick below it slightly? Yeah, 100%. But making a new low on this chart would be... A dis it, it would be disastrous for this entire market because the next level that we go down to, and this is all of crypto, by the way, would be about $570 billion. So almost $300 billion wiped out of crypto from this FIB level to the bottom here. But I, I do believe that this is going to hold. I actually believe that we are in um, a very good area of not only risk management, but we have an an opportunity to have a lifetime ahead of us because again everyone is calling for such bearish events while the market still looks pretty decent and also just so that you guys know uh the three major indicators that i'm watching for as we do kind of march into today uh especially with the fed meeting with everything unfolding i'm watching indices uh because currently indices are still looking pretty rough i mean like we have been paused over the weekend uh, today, I have been looking at some of the features for these. They haven't opened yet, I believe, but I will be looking at the futures closely uh, right around the range of like possibly 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. EST. I highly advise you guys to check out the futures. It doesn't mean that we will see a massive sell-off or anything like that, but futures do help gauge what is... Uh, the sentiment around the markets. Uh, but right now I have been looking at a lot of altcoins and XRP is one of them. Trust me. XRP is one that I have been eyeing for closely to see if we are going to get a nice retest of this demand range down here, which I mean, like I said, you know, this, this market will play into the fear. Do not, do not disregard that at all. That, that's why I do have staples on the sidelines just in case we do retest some of these levels. The first one that I'm looking at and I do believe that it will hold is going to be the 33 cent to almost 38 cent zone. If you go and look at the monthly chart, you could definitely see why I'm gauging that area as major buy zone. Um, we have been holding it so far. Again, a lot of people think that we are going to go much, much lower on X on XRP. They're saying, you know, 22 cents possibly, which I could definitely see. This is the SEC's, um, you know, massive price action support zone that we did kind of dead set on uh, before we had that massive run up. Again, you know, I, if I was somebody who didn't have an XRP position, I would be averaging in around 41 and almost a half cents. 
Um, I think that that's the first area of major support that we could backtest. Uh, but if we do lose it, I would have a tight stop loss and I would be buying down in this 33 to 38 cent region, which is a very good area of opportunity. And uh, yes, uh, yesterday I just made a video on XRP actually uh, going into the next major cycle, which, you know, if we do start the cycle now, which I don't think is the, I, I don't think that that's the case. Um, I just think that we are going to see a little bit of a bullish sentiment in the market kind of unfold uh, going into today. Um, we will most likely have a little bit of a run up. Remember, November is usually bearish for crypto, but you know who knows what will happen. Um, I'm just been taking some positions because I do believe that, hey, we are nearing the halving for Bitcoin. I mean, the Bitcoin having is in like 2024, uh, 2023 is nearly here. Uh, so there's not a lot of time left to really kind of accumulate a lot of these tokens. I mean, yeah, obviously we will have a lot more opportunity um, ahead of us. But right now I have been buying these incredible areas of opportunity on some of these tokens like XRP. I've, I've been accumulating this range for a while and I was actually very lucky to do so because, hey, that run up to almost like 60 some cents was very incredible. And a lot of people are still calling for some major higher targets on XRP to be kind of morphed into reality at this current moment in time. I think that there's still a lot of uh, resistance there to really kind of be met. For example, the resistance going all the way back to September of 2018, that's the one that I've been watching for. Uh, but I still have my targets set up here going into the next major cycle. I think that by, you know, I, I say like by the end of 2023, but honestly, we could see a settlement um, happen within the March to May timeframe on XRP. A lot of people have been calling for a lot earlier. Who knows what's really going to happen with that. But with, with a settlement happening, with all of the events that are unfolding before our eyes, this is still a very, very similar time frame. Um, you know, it's pretty much going all the way back to March of 2020. You can definitely see the floor model that we built back there in March as well, all the way to about June, July. Uh, it was an incredible floor that we built. Very similar to where we are now. I mean, we have this deep wick candle here. We have this floor model built out. We're kind of pumping a little bit. I'm not saying that we're going to do this identical move here or anything like that, but it still looks pretty good to have that floor. This would be the area that I am accumulating if we do see it again. Uh, we could back test the 382, for example, and then start to run back up to about the 0 0.5. Who knows what's going to happen here, but uh, that's what I'm eyeing. I'm looking at these support ranges to accumulate a lot more. I don't think that we are going on a massive bull run just yet, but I definitely am watching the dollar to ignite that bull run. I think that we do have a little bit more steam left in the tank for this. I think that we could possibly top out at about $1.20. Could we have already have topped out 100%? It does take time for the markets to kind of catch up with what the DXY does. Uh, for example, going all the way back to March 2020 during this time frame, you know, not all tokens did a massive move just yet. They did kind of accumulate in a nice range for a little bit. XRP is a perfect example of this, uh, but I do believe that the dollar is nearing its topping out point. I think that the bearish sediment and the bearish opportunity in this market is kind of being exhausted a little bit. I think a lot of this is just... Uh, Playing into market psychology, I, and I've always told you guys, like market psychology is the biggest aspect to watch for in this market. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day. We have some night. Wherever you guys are on this before, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.